Welcome to the One Year Bible, June 4, the Old Testament reading, 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1, through chapter 23, verse 23. David sang this song to the Lord on the day the Lord rescued him from all his enemies and from Saul. He sang, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my Savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. He is my refuge, my Savior, the one who saves me from violence. I called on the Lord who is worthy of praise, and He saved me from my enemies. The waves of death overwhelmed me, Floods of destruction swept over me. The grave wrapped its ropes around me. Death laid a trap in my path. But in my distress I cried out to the Lord. Yes, I cried to my God for help. He heard me from His sanctuary. My cry reached His ears. Then the earth quaked and trembled. The foundations of the heavens shook. They quaked because of his anger. Smoke poured from his nostrils. Fierce flames leapt from his mouth. Glowing coals blazed forth from him. He opened the heavens and came down. Dark storm clouds were beneath his feet. Mounted on a mighty angelic being, he flew, soaring on the wings of the wind. He shrouded himself in darkness veiling his approach with dense rain clouds. A great brightness shone around him, and burning coals blazed forth. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot arrows and scattered his enemies. His lightning flashed, and they were confused. Then, at the command of the Lord, at the blast of his breath, the bottom of the sea could be seen and the foundations of the earth were laid bare. He reached down from heaven and rescued me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemies, from those who hated me and were too strong for me. They attacked me at a moment when I was in distress, but the Lord supported me. He led me to a place of safety. He rescued me because He delights in me. The Lord rewarded me for doing right. He restored me because of my innocence. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not turned from my God to follow evil. I have followed all His regulations. I have never abandoned His decrees. I am blameless before God. I have kept myself from sin. The Lord rewarded me for doing right. He has seen my innocence. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To those with integrity, you show integrity. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the crooked, you show yourself shrewd. You rescue the humble, but your eyes watch the proud and humiliate them. O oh Lord, you are my lamp. The Lord lights up my darkness. In your strength I can crush an army. With my God I can scale any wall. God's way is perfect. All the Lord's promises prove true. He is a shield for all who look to Him for protection. For who is God except the Lord? Who but our God is a solid rock? God is my strong fortress, and He makes my way perfect. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer, enabling me to stand on mountain heights. He trains my hands for battle. He strengthens my arm to draw a bronze bow. You have given me your shield of victory. Your help has made me great. You have made a wide path for my feet to keep them from slipping. I chased my enemies and destroyed them. I did not stop until they were conquered. I consumed them. I struck them down so they did not get up. They fell beneath my feet. 
You have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued my enemies under my feet. You placed my foot on their necks. I have destroyed all who hated me. They looked for help, but no one came to their rescue. They even cried to the Lord, but He refused to answer. I ground them as fine as the dust of the earth. I trampled them in the gutter like dirt. You gave me victory over my accusers. You preserved me as the ruler over nations. People I don't even know now serve me. Foreign nations cringe before me. As soon as they hear of me, they submit. They all lose their courage and come trembling from their strongholds. The Lord lives. Praise to my rock. May God, the rock of my salvation, be exalted. He is the God who pays back those who harm me. He brings down the nations under me and delivers me from my enemies. You hold me safe beyond the reach of my enemies. You save me from violent opponents. For this, O Lord, I will praise you among the nations. I will sing praises to your name. You give great victories to your king. You show unfailing love to your anointed, to David and all his descendants forever. These are the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, speaks. David, the man who was raised up so high. David, the man anointed by the God of Jacob. David, the sweet psalmist of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His words are upon my tongue. The God of Israel spoke. The Rock of Israel said to me, The one who rules righteously, who rules in the fear of God, is like the light of morning at sunrise, like a morning without clouds like the gleaming of the sun on new grass after rain. Is it not my family God has chosen? Yes, He has made an everlasting covenant with me. His agreement is arranged and guaranteed in every detail. He will ensure my safety and success. But the godless are like thorns to be thrown away, for they tear the hand that touches them. One must use iron tools to chop them down. They will be totally consumed by fire. These are the names of David's mightiest warriors. The first was Jashobim, the Hakmonite, who was leader of the three, the three mightiest warriors among David's men. He once used his spear to kill 800 enemy warriors in a single battle. Next in rank among the three, was Eleazar, son of Dodai, a descendant of Ahoa. Once Eleazar and David stood together against the Philistines when the entire Israelite army had fled. He killed the Philistines until his hand was too tired to lift his sword, and the Lord gave him a great victory that day. The rest of the army did not return until it was time to collect the plunder. Next in rank was Shammah, son of Agi from Harar. One time the Philistines gathered at Lehi and attacked the Israelites in a field full of lentils. The Israelite army fled, but Shema held his ground in the middle of the field and beat back the Philistines. So the Lord brought about a great victory. Once during the harvest, when David was at the cave of Adullam, the Philistine army was camped in the valley of Rephaim. The three, who were among the thirty, an elite group among David's fighting men, went down to meet him there. David was staying in the stronghold at the time, and a Philistine detachment had occupied the town of Bethlehem. David remarked longingly to his men, Oh, how I would love some of that good water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew some water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem, and brought it back to David. But he refused to drink it, Instead, he poured it out as an offering to the Lord. The Lord forbid that I should drink this, he exclaimed. This water is as precious as the blood of these men who risk their lives to bring it to me. So David did not drink it. 
These are examples of the exploits of the three. Abishai, son of Zeruiah, the brother of Joab, was the leader of the thirty. He once used his spear to kill three hundred enemy warriors in a single battle. It was by such feats that he became as famous as the three. Abishai was the most famous of the thirty and was their commander, though he was not one of the three. There was also Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant warrior from Kabzeel. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two champions of Moab. Another time, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. Once, armed only with a club, he killed an imposing Egyptian warrior who was armed with a spear. Benaiah wrenched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with it. Deeds like these made Benaiah as famous as the three mightiest warriors. He was more honored than the other members of the thirty, though he was not one of the three, and David made him captain of his bodyguard. The New Testament reading, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 47. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages? Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, and we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, They're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved people of Israel, listen! God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you well know. But God knew what would happen, and his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to a cross and killed him. But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life, for death could not keep him in its grip. King David said this about him, I see that the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, 
for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad, and my tongue shouts his praises. My body rests in hope, for you will not leave my soul among the dead, or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life. You will fill me with the joy of your presence. Dear brothers, think about this. You can be sure that the patriarch David was not referring to himself, for he died and was buried, and his tomb is still here among us. But he was a prophet, and he knew God had promised with an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead or allow his body to rot in the grave. God raised Jesus from the dead, and we are all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And the Father, as he promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see and hear today. For David himself never ascended into heaven. Yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time strongly urging all his listeners, Save yourselves from this crooked generation! Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the good will of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Psalm 122 verses 1 through 9 I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. And now here we are, standing inside your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a well-built city. Its seamless walls cannot be breached. All the tribes of Israel, the Lord's people, make their pilgrimage here. They come to give thanks to the name of the Lord, as the law requires of Israel. Here stand the thrones where judgment is given, the thrones of the dynasty of David. Pray for peace in Jerusalem. May all who love this city prosper. O oh, Jerusalem, may there be peace within your walls and prosperity in your palaces. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, may you have peace. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek what is best for you, O oh, Jerusalem. Proverbs 16, verses 19 and 20. Better to live humbly with the poor than to share plunder with the proud. 
Those who listen to instruction will prosper. Those who trust the Lord will be joyful.